Hi, my name is Joe Yerkovitz. This is my 6740 Conoline full mod. Uh, purchased, built, and bought by me. Um, there's plenty of modifications I've done to this vehicle. There's actually 46 of them if you sit down and think about them. And it, actually, it's like a Frankenstein because it's all makes and models. I don't uh, really frown on other vehicles of makes and models, but I prefer my Ford. I love it. She has a 240 in it, 60 over, cam, four, exa uh, four uh, barrel exhaust system and all that good stuff. Uh, mild detail. I got some, uh, of course, uh, interiors, basically stock. I threw a couple uh, little 63 twists into it because I had a 63 at one time and unfortunately it got a uh, messed up in, in a car wreck and I decided to build this one and uh, with this one I took a lot of parts from the 63 that I could salvage and reiterated it in my 67 heavy duty mm -hmm. okay it is my dash it's basically a mild custom the only thing that was actually changed in it was the gauge package in it I upgraded the gauges mm -hmm. uh, the wood grain of course uh, the stick shift is from an A100 Dodge. I want it automatic. And the stereo is basically an old school, but yet modern. It'd be considered old school nowadays, but it's still old school, you know. Has the regular two amps and the equalizers, passive, you know, separates the, the speakers and the subwoofers. Mm -hmm. um, all the wood grain on the doors are, uh, you know, custom, mild custom that I did, and, you know, and uh, handles, of course, you've probably seen those already. They're, they're called from old school customs, and mm -hmm. they're like a million years old, and they still look good <laughs> even to this day. So I'm blessed with that, you know. Uh, put some Kenwood 6x9s in the doors. Um, oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, other than that, uh, the dash is that is all original. I did the sunroof. Actually, the sunroof is mounted into the body itself. Yeah. So it's not like uh, your average sunroof. It's old school, but if up top, if you look at it, it's flush mounted. It's all integrated into the body, yeah. period. And uh, I got a Cadillac uh, map lights. I don't use them, They're, but they work, and, oh, yeah. but they, they look good, just mm -hmm. a little throw off. A 33 uh, Ford rear view mirror there, it's pretty cool. A lot of old school, 33 stuff is integrated in this vehicle as well. I got the motor is just uh, it's a 240 It's a 60 over mild cam has a dual uh, Racing headers long tube racing headers in the dual exhaust That flow out each side through the quarter panels with flamethrowers on it Cause on it, uh, it has a uh, 3500 CFM uh, auxiliary fan in it for when I'm stagnant it don't really run hot, but it's there just in case. Intake from uh, equal, uh, what is it? Often, I think it's off a hauser, but. And I got the four barrel, that's a 390 vacuum secondaries. I got the Praxin uh, distributor set up in there, converted it, and the high, high power coil wires and but other than that, uh, the motor runs great. I put uh, the Champion Core uh, radiator in. Eh, wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, I see you got a, a window there on your. Yeah, I did. I, from the other side. Yeah. yeah, I did a custom lid on it because of the bump out for the intake. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of people will say, "Oh, well, you could have just did that and other," but I wanted something a little more unique, so I decided to put a plexiglass. Uh, top on it where you can see the motor mm -hmm. and at night you can uh, turn on the lights and the motor glows because I got uh, glow lights within the motor underneath in top on the top of the the roof and that so I have a little different quirks that you really don't see you know unless mm -hmm. it's nighttime now what's this down here for with the, this little knob down here what okay uh, the little knob here this is actually my uh, parking brake 
Oh, yeah. I pull it up. Oh, okay. And this is actually from uh, an old house. A door handle, yeah. Yep. An old doorknob, yeah. Glass doorknob. And I did same same thing like up here. Mm -hmm. Used all glass knobs, you know. Yeah. Made it different. You know, I got my switches here. This is for my uh, fan. This is for my uh, what flood white. And this is for my uh, flamethrowers. Mm -hmm. Then I did a custom... Uh, with the um, tachometer, I did it. The horn, you know, I kept it basic, easy. Yeah, you got the wooden steering wheel. And this is from a 1919 electric car. Wow. Yeah, I had this in my first vehicle that I rolled. Actually, when I went through the windshield, this was up like a almost a mushroom. I drove this all the way to the ground. I had it in my hand. Mm. And uh, when I rebuilt this, I rebuilt that. Yeah. Nice. And. Uh, Actually, this ain't steel, it's um, iron. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it, and it interrates into the steering wheel. Yeah, yeah. has like lips in there, it comes like that, too. Yeah. Huh. But that's Very cool. yeah. original, you know, I put an extra vent in. I took out the heater box to the 67. I put a heater box from a 63 into it. And then it used to have a, a vent on one side and mm -hmm. i decided to put two vents in and you know make it a little more cooler to dry because they're considered hot boxes mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and, and that's exactly what it is yeah. a hot box on the outside i decided it, it actually the actual color of this was white but my first one my 63 was actually a 63 truck caribbean turquoise blue mm -hmm. and i fell in love with the color it was blue and white and uh, I went with all blue. Sometimes it looks green, sometimes it looks blue. Mm -hmm. All depends on what shade of light. And then a friend of mine, you know, said if I ever wanted to get a graphic done on my new van, that he would gift me whatever I wanted. And I decided, you know, early model Fords are really hard to take the flames because they're a body line. Mm -hmm. So I decided, let's do a ghost flame with, um, with pearls. So we added extra uh, metallic to push out the colors. So I have a, a pearl blue with extra metallic. I got a pearl green with extra metallic. And also I got a, a darker shade of green for the shade and a pearl white with a clear coat. So, and Bubba did it. I got to get my hands to him. He's a very good yeah, man, great it. friend. Yeah. You know, uh, I went up there, spend the weekend and me, him and his son came out with a pattern and Oof, there it is. Are you telling me about your pipes down here? Oh, my pipes. So like I said, uh, not too often you see people, uh, you know, yep. cut holes in, the, in their quarter panels, <laughs> yeah. you know. And I decided, you know what, I never seen an early model yet with a set of pipes coming through it. So I decided I'm going to do it. it. It Actually, it's a harder piece that I did than what it actually looks because the body comes like that. Mm -hmm. So I had to make a two piece metal set up. When I cut it out, I made it two piece because you can't make it one piece because of the way it was mm -hmm. fabricated. And I took out the body line. And what I did is I faded the front going to the back because the way the pipes come out. I didn't want it flat, I wanted it faded. And if you look at from the front of it and you look back, you'll see how it fades out. Mm -hmm. You know, so that, that was another thing. Then I unrolled the, the wheel lip, you know, give them my own personal touch. That's old school uh, fender flares. That's basically, it was like this. And what I did is I unrolled it and made my flares because I went with a wider tire. Those are um, 245 14s on eight and a half inch Kregers. These are uh, 225 70 14s on uh, 14 by seven Kregers. Mm -hmm. All right, in the front here, I got 1933 brush guards that were on my first van that got wrecked but was managed to be saved. My uh, 63 that I had, of course, 
this was on the this tube grill was made by a friend of mine that helped me built the 63 in the beginning and God rest his soul he passed away before he had a chance to take a ride in it but uh, after the accident I've tried to fix the grill as much as possible and reiterate it into the 67 now these are 1947 custom deluxe Chevy custom deluxe uh, parking parking lights uh, I want to be different from the last one to some degree and something that you don't see every day because if you look at it 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 fades to the body lines it was all done in metal and also I, I used the fiberglass for it for a simple reason is how you say body putty tends to crack where if you use a, a fiberglass you know it has some leeway and I iterated those. They didn't have the back lighting to them, so what I did is I took the original light outings from the 67 and mounted and made light mounts for the back of it. Because mm -hmm. I couldn't find them, couldn't buy them anywhere. Yeah, and I see you got the, uh, what are those, the LED lights, headlights? I, yeah, I put the LED headlights in. Uh, okay. I had the blue dots that were in um, the 63, but in the wreck, I only had one blue dot, so I ended up changing it just to the to the white ones because it, I figured I'd give it a contour with the glass knobs that I got mm -hmm. on the dash and in the back, and uh, just got basically uh, my fog lamps. I use them as extra driving lights, and uh, they're like 10,000 candle watts. It's enough to yeah. Uh, brighten up the road because I drive a lot at night when I go to van runs if they're far away I leave late at night when the roads kind of clear yeah, quite. yeah also under the on, in the undercarriage and wheel wells area I dropped the wheel wells down because underneath these are basically like a unibody the body and the frame are all in one and uh, dirt used to kick up it used to gather a lot in here because it was hollow yeah. What I did is I cl sh closed it all off. I dropped the wheel wells uh, 11 inches by 10 and a half in the back of each of the wheel wells. And then I did 10 and a half by 10 and a half in the front and dropped the front ones. That way, debris don't kick up underneath the vehicle anymore. Because yeah. it, it, you know, my undercarriage is detailed, very fine detailed. Mm -hmm. I made uh, custom traction bars for them. Uh, it has a 350 posi in it. Uh, I put a posi in it due to the fact that I go to a lot of van runs. I'm in the grass or something. I need that extra traction. Mm -hmm. And this being a heavy duty, it has the big nine inch in it. Uh, got a C4 uh, automatic. Uh, and, that, and my dry shaft is that long and I paid 300 bucks for it. <laughs> so think about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but. I have a custom uh, carriage underneath it for the transmission, of course, because I went to automatic, and it's the big one, so it gives it gives it a lot of uh, sturdiness. I had uh, coil springs, or not coil springs, the leaf springs recurved with new bushings in. The whole the whole van is actually brand new. Mm -hmm. I tore it down from. A rust bucket all the way to zero and then rebuilt it one piece at a time in my my little garage i took the horn button i thought it was pretty neat to make a gas cap out of it i thought it was something different i didn't see it anywhere and i figured well okay cool i'll put that in so i did that then uh i had regular flat windows in oh, yeah. and and uh yeah. They normally they come with, with pop-outs unless they're on the side of the doors. Mm -hmm. But that was something I figured, you know what, I'm going to put them, put a set in the back. I thought they were pretty cool. Uh, the lava scene, actually, that you see on the windows, I did in my 63. It was, I was so fond of the 63, it was like the love of my life. And I just transferred a lot of my... A vision from that van to this van yeah, a lot of ideas yeah because when I was building a vehicle actually I knew what it was gonna look like before it was done because that's what emphasized me to drive 
to get it built. Mm -hmm. You know, I did the uh, tail lights, and they're from a 59 Cadillac. Uh, what I did is I took the lenses out, I cut the lenses an inch and three quarters, and then I Frenched them in two inches. Over, and then all Your bumper there, my too. bumpers, <laughs> actually, yeah. this, is, this is a weird story how these came about. When I was building my 63 and I was uh, redoing my motor, I had a pallet that it was on. And I couldn't figure out, you know, for the love of God, what kind of system. I, I, first, I was going to go with the old four inch and then the three inch. And I said, nah. And my girl says, uh, so what are you going to do with the pallet? You know, we need some wood for out in the yard because I have a burn container in the yard that we sit around yeah and I go like this I said I don't know because you know they're really good wood and I said you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make a pair of bumpers out of them <laughs> and she said you kidding me and I said nope and that's what I did there you go. and then the line badges of course oh, yeah. I put on there I want people to know I'm rolling heavy that's right there and go. then I I uh, rolled all this is this I made it all flush mm -hmm. I French this all in. Yeah. I put uh, truck lights in there that way it keeps it bright. And actually, the the one Go was from my first van, and I just transferred to this. And actually, the license plate holder was from my first van. It, it just yeah. little things to remind me of yeah. my first van because yeah. I was in love with it. Yeah, right. I was in love with it, and, and I put a 22-gallon gas tank from a 70 Mustang in it because the 16-gallon wasn't working. Uh, so, of course, you know, bigger engine, bigger, more gas, and bigger tank, but it was best that I did that. Yeah. Um, and it used to have reverse lights, but there's another piece to the 63 yeah. that didn't have reverse lights, and I alleviated that from that part. The top... It's from a uh, 68 uh, Vesta Cruiser, uh -huh. Oldsmobile Vesta Cruiser. It was gifted to me by a friend of mine, Chaz Warfel. Uh, he was a member of Performance, and uh, me and him are really good friends. And I was at his house the one day, and I seen this thing laying on the ground. I didn't know what it was, actually. I asked him about it, and he told me. And uh, I said, you're telling me this fits on a van? He says, you can make it fit. It's going to take a lot. And I told him, I said, well, you know what? How much you want for it? I said, I'm going to see, see what I can do. And uh, he says, if I give it to you, will you put it on your van? I said, are you serious? <laughs> and he said, yeah. And I didn't believe it. He actually gave it to me. And <laughs> when I told him I put it on a van, <laughs> it was fun. And I did it all by myself. Nobody helped me put that on. Nobody helped me cut it out or nothing. I put that, did all myself. When I first got the, the top, I took two inches off the front here, from here to here. So I cut this and left it dormant. And then I took nine inches from here, here back, because of the water ridges here, and I wanted to put my sunroof in. Oh, okay. So since there's an opening behind the sunroof and here, it was like really hard because of the water pockets. Ah. So I took a piece of the, every piece of body steel that I took out of this van, I put back into the van. Ah. And what I did is I made a plate behind this and uh, faded all together. That way, if, if it rains, the water just drifts off. Yeah. Like I was saying before, the sunroof is mounted right into the body. Mm -hmm. Got the wing on here too. Uh, that ain't a wing, actually. That's a a 2005 Mustang hood scoop. Well, is that right? Yes, it is. And I modified it to make my third brake light. These uh, turn singles, they work with these turn singles. They're four ways. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't work with the driving lights because I didn't want them to work. I just, I just wanted them to work with the four ways and the turn singles. With the stainless steel that was on here, mm -hmm. it had to be modified in the back because normally the stainless steel comes all the way down to here. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that you can't cut stainless steel with a, <laughs> with a, with a cutter the, mm. uh, or, or even a grinder. I, I, I was actually flabbergasted to find out that 
you actually got to cut it with shears. Wow. So it was like one shot and done. Yeah. I have a friend in California that had one piece, but if I would have messed up the other piece, I would have been, forget about it, I wasn't getting it. But to mandate the, the fiberglass to the steel, mm -hmm. I actually had the modified steel to the fiberglass with epoxy glue. Mm. And the reason why I had to use epoxy glue because you can't weld to it, you know, to uh, yeah. fiberglass. Uh -huh. So. When I when I did the top there, I epoxied steel to the fiberglass and then cut it and welded it to the the steel to the top. Yeah. All right. The interior actually is basic from a 1970 era. Uh, I had a an early model Dodge when I was a young man, and it was basically like this, but it didn't have the carpet in because uh, we just threw sheets and towels and whatever, you know, that you can find when you go to lay around somewhere. Yeah. But uh, when I did the woodwork, the woodwork was really hard because in the Econo line, they look like they're all even, but they're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like really hard to play with it. Oh. So, and doing a transition up top mm -hmm. with the Vesta Cruiser was like really hard because I channeled all the wood to try to get it as best as I could, mm -hmm. but just like I said again, they look like they're even and everything's flush and straight, but and every piece is different size for a simple reason is everything is different. It's not always what it seems to be, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and uh, but I kept it basically retro, except for, like I said, uh, I put an entertainment system in. This was actually in from my uh, 63. Oh, okay, yeah. And uh, yeah. I had it actually in the corner where it has a, a surround sound system that I mounted actually inside the van itself. Mm -hmm. And it, everything's uh, segregated inside there. I got a trickle charger, an extra battery, and an inverter. Nice. Just in case uh, I might be on my own somewhere and I need power, I can utilize that. Underneath, I have a isolator. isolator. Yeah, I got yeah, an isolator, yeah, isolator in there, and yeah. and if you look over there, those actually are working system there. I can plug them into the the unit and run my systems with it because mm -hmm. everything's separate. Yeah. Um, and I got side boxes. You know, you put your junk in. You know, everybody got to have a junk box. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, and, yeah, and these are. Uh, I made it Fat Man status. I call it Fat Man status because it's all remote control. Wow. Everything's remote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my other one was <laughs> it was somewhat remote, but nice. that's my junk box. And uh, you got your speakers. Back I got there. I got my subs back here, and yeah. and that has a two uh, amp system in it as well. Like, combined with the stereo up front mm -hmm. uh, and the back on the doors I put the lace I always like lace because that's 60 stuff mm -hmm. it was cute back in the day oh, yeah. I did the doorknobs that that go with the parking brake you know on this side and and the inside on uh, going and uh, cool. yeah, uh, everything is, it, it, is Everything ain't really hard, but I kept it the way it was back in the in the seventies when we used to hang out, you know, with with our buddies and that and girlfriends, you know, because we didn't have we used to throw a mattress. I remember just throwing a a baby mattress in the back yep. just so we had something to sit on or bean bags or oh, yeah. you know, it, it was Perfect easy. For camping right there. Yep, and this is the way I camp. I. I deflate all this. I got the big floor. I put all my camping gear in there mm -hmm. after I laid down a tarp, put all my gear in here and yep. head to the next run. Nice. And then I got my fan, you know, when I want to oh, kick yeah. back. You got to have some cool. Yep. And I, I don't keep a lot of things, but I my little lights there, I thought they were really cool because they were made by a friend and, and it was like a 60 area thing. Yep. And I thought they were really neat. Mm -hmm. I don't burn them because I just like them. Yeah. Pictures, you know, 70s when they used to make them. And mm -hmm. yeah. that one was just gifted to me from a friend of mine named Ron Dillon. And uh, I was really grateful because I've been looking for one for such a long time. And he, 
at the last van run, he gifted it to me, and I said, thank oh, you. Cool. So I refurbished it and stained yeah. it, and it matches this one, and it was, like, really super cool. That was in my last van. It, it didn't break. I was amazed. Yeah. And actually, I purchased another one that looks exactly like that, and, and instead of putting the one that I purchased in here, I put the one that was in my last van. And the whole thing was built, designed, created by me. It's a good feeling. I, I would, you know, I do a lot of things that I didn't think I was incapable of, but believe it or not, I learned how to do all this by just listening to older people and watching things. Because uh -huh. late at night, you know, I sit up, I call it my personal time, mm -hmm. and say if I'm going to get ready to do something that requires some knowledge and was I sit up I read on it I watch videos on videos, it I, I I actually YouTube. school myself yeah and that's why I said you know, nobody helped me build this van nobody well, see that's what we're trying to get across to a lot of guys you know get a van and just start just do it build it to Don't your likeness if, if it turns out wrong change it that's it exactly that's what we're trying yeah. I, I always tell people a van is a reflection of your personality yeah, it's always right. going to be like that yep you know, what you create is what you are. Right. Yeah. You know, it Very don't true. have to be the perfect thing in the world, but it's yours and you're proud of it. It don't matter what somebody else thinks or says or feels about it right. because it's yours. You did it your way. You got it. And if you're happy and content with it, don't care about what other people think because that's your creation. Right. Custom. This is your. That's called a custom. Yep. One of a kind. That's right. You built it to the way you felt fit. Right. And if nobody likes it. Hell, yeah, well, it's mine. What do you got to say for some of these young guys out there, even some of the old, the old guys our age and stuff that want to get back out there? What do you well, got to say, you, what you say to them? You know what I say to them? If your heart's in it, go and do it. That's right. Because, you know, time's only essence. It, that's it. You know, yep. nothing's promised tomorrow, but today we live for the day and make it happen. If you're happy, do it. If that's going to make you happy, do it. Nobody can change your mind. Nobody can guide you or anything if you feel content and happy comfortable do it Perfect. and with that being said my name is joe yurkovitz get a van get out of here be a part you'll love it they always say you know you might like it you might not but if it all depends on how sweet your tooth is so get a van do it your way i love it i've been vanning for many years i love it when I was younger, I had a van, but I really wasn't a, a part of a community, but that was our era. Everybody had vans. That, you know, was even weird too. We also had, um, what do they call, uh, station wagons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had station wagons that we turned into what we now build vans. Right. And uh, just like I said, come to these things you're part of the family yeah we're one big happy family right yes we are we're you know what there you'll find some of the best people in the whole world out of van run yep. and you know why because you all share one common bond togetherness familyness unity and, the van. and vans all right everybody's curious on what a six cylinder sounds like that's modified here you go a brand new vehicle and it is brand new I got enough stump to get in there. There you go. That don't get your heart pumping nothing well. That's right. Sounds good, man. Well, thanks for showing it to us. All right, man. Been wanting to get it for a while, so now we got her done. <laughs>